me to Ezekiel chapter 37. And if you would look at verse 1, and if we could all stand for the reading of the word, if you're new, this is how we get down at Victor Outreach. We respect God. We respect his word. Amen. So I know some of you, you know, used to sitting down in church. You'll have plenty of time to sit down. But for this moment, when we read his word, we ask you to stand. Is that all right? Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning in verse 1, it says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open field. And indeed, notice here, they were very dry. Say that with me. Say they were very dry. Say they were very, very dry. Just like some of you this morning. Woo, man, there's a, there's a you are dry as a bone, my God. And then he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Now go on to verse 10. He says, so I prophesied as he commanded, and breath came into them. How many know that's good news? How many know it's good news whenever the Spirit of God will breathe on you? So if you're dry this morning, how many know the anointing is available to you? Come on, say amen. Say thank God. So he prophesied and he commanded, breath came into them. Notice here, and they lived, stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. This morning, I want to speak to you on leaders who do warfare. Oh, none of y'all been in a fight. How many know what it is to fight the devil? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about leaders who do warfare. Before you see, they give your neighbor a high five. Tell we're going to learn something good today. Go ahead and be seated. What a great turnout. Church has been great. Crowds have been great. What a week we had. It's been a great, great week. And I want to talk to you about leaders who do warfare. Because how many know we're in a battle? Right? And one thing I've learned in 25 years of doing ministry and serving God strongly all those years is I've learned that your environment is everything. Say that with me. Say environment. Tell your neighbor, your environment will either make you or break you. And when I look at this portion of scripture, the Bible tells us that these bones at one time were a great army. At one time, they were organized. At one time, they were together. At one time, they were pushing back the enemy. But then something happened. They entered into a valley of defeat. And the Bible says they became very, very dry. And I want to tell you that the reason the church of God is not as effective as it should be is because many Christians come to church and are under spiritual attack and they don't even know it. See, because just because you come to church, now watch how this gets real, and just because you sit in the pew every week doesn't mean that you're moving in the power of God. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. How many know Jesus came so that we could have power? How many of you desire a greater power within your life? What happened to this army in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 is that sin came in, they came under attack, and the devil won. And I've got a word for you here, Victor Outreach San Diego. Don't let the devil win. Where are you this morning? Come on, where are you this morning? I'll say it again. Don't let the devil win. Don't let the world win. Don't let sin come in and dry you out. I'm on fire. Tell your neighbor, don't let the devil win. That's what happened. Sin came in. Defeated the army. They went into a valley of defeat. And they became very dry. See, understand me that there are powerful forces working against a leader's life. There are powerful forces working against you. You know, these last few years in our church, many of you know this, have been tough years. Are you with me? They've been times of battle, times of war. My, my wife and I, your pastors, we've been going through different 
heavy, heavy trials and heavy battles. But one of the things that we determined in our heart that we were going to fight for, watch, is we determined in our heart that we were going to fight for the environment of the church. Now, you ought to get happy about that. Because the reason you are here this morning and the reason this place is packed out is because we didn't let the environment become dry. All right. Okay, some of you are going to catch this. We didn't let Sunday morning become a funeral service. I want to tell you something, Victor Outreach San Diego. I don't come to church on Sunday morning after a week of fighting the devil to walk into a place that's conservative. I didn't come here to have a funeral. I came to give God glory for giving me his power, for giving me the power to make it another day. Are there any leaders here that understand the power of God's environment? The power of, oh, come on. Somebody just looking at me like you all beat up by the devil. I'm going to need you to wake up this morning and understand that if you are here this morning you are in the right place you are in the place where you're going to get filled you're in the place where you're going to get stirred up you're in the place where you're going to find hope we fought for the environment and that's what some of you need to start doing you need to take what's happening here and you need to take it home with you oh my god you need to go home and shut that Kardashians off See, people don't like when I talk bad about the Kardashians, but I'm going to keep on doing it because I want to get on your nerves until you shut that Kardashians off and stop following them on Facebook and stop liking all their pictures. Come on, somebody. It's time to get off the TV tube. It's time to shut off the worldly music. It's time to stop all the screaming and all the arguments and home and all the bickering and all the flesh. You ain't hearing me. Come on, it's time to change something. It's time to take out the world's environment and bring down the Holy Ghost. Come on, be hospitable to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, take control of my home. Holy Spirit, take control of my house. Come on, give my home the environment that's in the house of the Lord. My house belongs to the Lord. My family belongs to the Lord. Come on, somebody. Are there any leaders that are ready to do some spiritual warfare this morning and say, devil, you can't have my family. Devil, you can't have all. Come on, somebody. You can't have what belongs to God. You've got to change the environment. Somebody say, change the environment. See, when a church can create an environment where the spirit of God is moving, there's going to be a hunger. <laughs> that's why you've been coming. That's why you don't miss the service. I see you. You're here on Sunday. You're here on Sunday night. You're here on Wednesday night. You're here. You, you, you're not addicted to the house of God. You're addicted to the presence of God. Come on, am I speaking truth this morning? You're addicted to the Holy Ghost. You can't get enough. See, we, we, we used to be drug addicts. Some of us, not all of us. A few of us were drug addicts, man. We, we couldn't wait to get our next fix. But once Jesus delivered us, now we're hooked on the Holy Ghost. We're hooked on the power of God because we know his power is real. We know that his power can change anything. We know that his power can heal. We know that his power can restore things that are broken. Come on, help me preach this morning. Is there anyone here addicted to the environment, addicted to the atmosphere, addicted to the Holy Ghost? When you can get the Spirit of God moving through prayer, through worship, through the preaching of God's Word, there's going to be a hunger. And where there's a hunger, then there's going to be a passion. And where there's a passion, watch, there's going to be life. Church should be full of life, not death. Good Lord. The preaching should be full of life. The singing should be full of life. The leadership. Are there any leaders here today? Come on. You, you shouldn't be a grumpy leader. Come on, grumpy guy. Put that smile on your face. Get that joy in your heart. Leaders need to let life flow through them. Let Be a channel of life. So when you get that atmosphere, the Spirit of God is moving. You're going to get that life and then as a result, you're going to get that growth. And then once you get that growth, watch this, that's when you have an atmosphere where leaders can start taking their place. And let me tell you that leaders, the church can't do what it's designed to do without leaders. 
without leaders. The church, listen, this is not just a bless me club gathering. Now, yes, we have a good environment. And yes, we come together to feel good and to access his presence. But that's just first base. Tell your neighbor, that's first base. What's the ultimate purpose of the church? The ultimate purpose of the church, my friend, is to do warfare. To do spiritual warfare. That's why you're here. You, you, you Look at man. Understand me. I know why you're here. You're here because you want to learn how to get the victory. You want to get the victory in your marriage. You want to get the victory in your life. Some of you need to get victory over life-controlling problems. Some of you have made mistakes, and you need the victory. Do you understand me when I tell you that warfare is the only way to get the victory? Come on, say amen. You know, I don't want to fight. I'm tired of fighting. Oh, baby, this life is a fight. Uh, this life's a fight. Yeah, but the problem before is that you fought for all the wrong things. You were on the wrong team. You were fighting for the devil. You were fighting for the world. But now you're in the house of the Lord. And you're on the right team. Come on, somebody. And you've already got the victory. Now all we need to do is learn how to do warfare. Say that with me. Say warfare. See, you say, well, where in the Bible does it say that the church is about warfare? Jesus said it when he mentioned church for the first time. He said, I will build my church. Watch this. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, Jesus was speaking in military terms when he talked about his church. He says, the minute I raise up a church, don't you understand that the devil is going to come against the church? Don't you understand that the minute you rise up for God, which you have done, that's why you're here. You, you, you've come out of the ashes of your life. You've You've, you've come out of the failure. You've made a decision. How many have made that decision? And, and, and Jesus is saying, the minute my church, because the church is not four, four walls and a, and a roof. You are the church. And he says, the minute my church rises up, watch this, that's when the devil, watch, wants to unleash a fierce attack against my church. Oh, oh this is good stuff. That's why when you get attacked, you shouldn't get discouraged. Because when you get attacked, you're not doing something wrong. You're doing something right. I like preaching to this side. They get excited. How about in the middle? Come on, you're doing something right. Come on, how about all the way in the youth section? You're doing something right. He used military terms because the purpose of the church, my friend, is to do warfare. Somebody say warfare. But in order for us to win... We need leaders that will overcome the barriers of attack. So there are certain attacks. There are certain things that the enemy would want to release into a leader's life. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, hold on, pastor. Leader? I'm not a leader. Um, I got a word for you. Yes, you are. Okay. You are a leader. Put your hand in your heart and say, I am a leader. And the reason you're a leader is because everyone has someone watching them. Mm, there was a song in the 80s. Here I go singing again. So now you're young, though, man. You don't know any of these good songs. It's all about Drake. Hey, Drake, 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 shut up with all that. Listen, there was good music. And in the 80s, there was a song that said, I always feel like Somebody's watching me. See, <laughs> where are my people at? Come on, where are my people at? Right? The song is so true. Everyone's got somebody watching them. They're not stalking you, they're just watching you. They're just watching you. Tell your neighbor, someone's watching you. You got an unsafe family member that's watching you that heard you started going to church. You got a loved one that's watching you that said you got serious about your faith. Many of you have children that are watching you. They're watching you in the good times. They're watching you in the bad times. They're watching how you're conducting yourself when you have the victory. They're watching you how you're conducting yourself when all hell is breaking loose in your life. But that's why you need to understand you are a leader. There are different types of leaders. It's not just leaders 
in the church. Sometimes I say, well, I don't have a position, pastor. I'm not, you know, head usher. I'm not a, a, a city life group leader. I'm not, you know, on staff with the church. I'm not on the worship. Okay, listen, I understand that you might not be a leader in the so-called leader in the church today, but you are a leader at home. You are a leader at home. And you need to understand the principles that work in the church are the same principles that work in the home. You're a leader at home. Some of you say, well, pastor, you know I'm not, but you are a leader at work. I was so blessed this week. One of our ELA students, is ELA in the house, Emergent Leaders Academy. We spent some time training, training them, and we, we begin to teach them and impart into them and tell them, listen, God not only wants to use your leadership in the church, but he wants to use your leadership in the community. He wants to use your leadership in the workplace. And one of our young ladies went on Facebook and she put a whole post thanking me and it was so cool. And I felt blessed from it. And she wrote, you know, I want to thank God for my pastor because I just got promoted at work. And I felt inadequate, but they said, no, you are a leader. And she goes, I give credit to ELA. Everything I've been learning in the house of God is causing me to get promoted in the workforce. Come on, somebody. Now she's a manager at work. She's getting more money. Come on, somebody. You are a leader. We have business owners in this place that oversee employees, and they have to make sure people get paid. You are a leader. Can I hear an amen? So whether you like it or not, maybe you just got into the mental. You've been off drugs just for six months. I came to tell you something. Somebody's watching you. You got to make it. You're a leader. You got to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Women, so you got to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. You've got a testimony. There's an anointing on your life. God wants to use you. Touch your heart and say, I am a leader. So with that understanding in mind, Every leader will face attack. Now, some of you are getting nervous, but loosen up, guys. I'm not going to talk about the devil today. How many are learning something? Every leader will face attack. Every leader will have opposition. And every leader will have to break particular barriers. Let me give you three barriers every leader must break. Write this down. Number one. Sooner or later, every leader is going to face a spiritual barrier. Spiritual barrier. Listen, when you first get saved, you have what's called the honeymoon experience. Oh, my God. How many remember that? No, I'm not talking when we got married. I'm talking when we got saved. Honeymoon experience. Everything... Oh, my God, all you saw was Jesus. I see Jesus in the pancakes. I see Jesus at my hop. Jesus everywhere. Everything was a sin. I didn't pray for my food. Spit it out. Father, God, forgive me right now for the prayer for my food. Now you just eat. You're, oh, 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 I forgot to pray. Oh, it's all right, God. No. Oh. <laughs> Take your neighbor, the honeymoon is over. The problem is leaders don't understand that there are times where even as a leader, you come under spiritual attack. Sometimes you think that just because you come to church or just because you're faithful at your post, watch this, or just because you're serving in the house of the Lord. Yes, I said it. Serving in the house of the Lord that you're okay. I want to tell you something, friend. It doesn't necessarily mean you're okay. Look at you and ask him, are you okay? Are you okay? No, no, I'm here, brother. I'm here. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know you're here. I know you're here. You're here every, you're here every week. I, I know. But are you okay? It's like when your wife asks you, husband, you know, she knows she's married to you, but she looks at me and says, boy, are you okay? Like, Why? <laughs> asking me, are you okay? Leaders come under attack. And just because you're in the house of the Lord and just because you're praying, you know, you, you, you're giving your tithe and you're serving doesn't mean you're not under attack. The fact is, many leaders are under attack and they don't even know it. So how can you know it? Number one, write this down. You know you're under spiritual attack when you're fed up with the Christian life. This is so true, and, and, and this is, I've 
lived every one of these points. You're fed up with the Christian life. You're fed up with church. Oh, you're here. You're here, baby. You're here. You're here, but you're not here. You're here, but you're not here, baby. I, I see it on you. You're here, but you're not here. You're fed up with people. You're fed up with people. Uh, this is, uh, you're fed up with people. He said, I'm going to church, but I hope I don't see brother so-and-so. Talk to me, somebody. I hope I don't see girl, because baby girl, I'm going to scratch your face. I'm fed up with church. I'm fed up. And then you're fed up with preaching. There he goes preaching on Ezekiel chapter 37 again. Does he have another sermon? Does he got any? Did he study this week? You, you, oh, I, who's preaching tonight? Because I'm not going if so-and-so's preaching tonight. We got to sing Good, Good Father again. How many times are we going to sing Good, Good Father? Yes, he's a good, good father, but you know, do I got to sing it every week? You're driving around town. You see people with the fish, the, the fish on the car, the bumper sticker. You say, that guy probably not even right with God. <laughs> see how I get it? You're under attack. You're under spiritual attack. You get fed up with the Christian life. The Christian life is a discipline. Now, we all know what it is to serve God with discipline. How many can say amen? amen. Right? You, you, you say, Pastor, but that's what you teach us. You say, come in the good times. Right? No, I know. I know. I do teach you that. Be in church, man. Be in church. You feel good? You don't feel good? Be in church. I mean, that's a discipline. We all know what it is to serve God with a discipline. But <laughs> if that goes on too long and you're just doing it <laughs> out of discipline, you need to go to the Lord and ask him, what's wrong with my heart? Come on, somebody. Because serving God is not a discipline. Serving God is a delight. Come on, somebody. And when we become too disciplined, the atmosphere gets dry. And what brings in the joy and what brings in the presence of God, it's when we delight ourselves in the Lord. When we come into the house of the Lord with a delight. We don't come to church because we have to be here. We come to church because we desire to be here. Oh, come on, Victory Outreach. Help me preach this morning. Some of you are catching it. You're breaking a spiritual barrier. Tell your neighbor, delight yourself in the Lord. Well, how do you else you know you're in a spiritual attack? You're bored in the house of the Lord. Bored. Just bored. There's no excitement. Can't shout. Can't praise. Everyone's singing. Everyone's dancing. Everybody's smiling. And you're bored. So boring. So boring. Oh, God. So boring. You know, Mark, he's up your park thing. Puerecito, he's jumping. Come on. And Shana's kicking. And she's kicking. And she's kicking. And she's kicking. And she said, hey, hey, somebody. If you ain't going to praise him, I'll praise him. And I'll just look back here and praise him. Come on, help me this morning. And you're so bored. You're so bored. Listen. Well, I'm not bored, Pastor. No, I'm not bored. I'm, I'm deep. I'm mature, Pastor. No, no, you ain't mature, bro. You're under attack. You're not mature. You're not deep. Stop trying to be deep because there was a time when you used to give God praise. There was a time when you didn't care what people thought about you. Hey, when they were dancing at the altar, you were the first one up there spinning, the first one up there shouting. Come on, is there anyone left like that in the house of the Lord? Don't try to be deep. Give God praise. Give God glory. <laughs> Now, I know it's not everybody, but this is good information, isn't it? In case you hit that time. You're going to hit that time. Tell you, you're going to hit that time. But you got to break through. What, what's another sign you're under attack? Critical spirit. 
<laughs> it's a good one, huh? Critical. Yeah. Why are they doing that? Why are they doing this? They should have prayed for the UTC people after they spoke. They should have. No, it's a negative. Why does the screen mess up? Why is this one? Why is Javier run over there? Why, 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 why do I say this song all the time? Why are you always talking about money? Why did I give? Why did I give? Why? Where's the money go? Where's all the money go? Where's all the money go? Well, first of all, lights, AC. Y'all want to be hot church? Because we can bring the fans out. But if you want AC, you better be paying your tithes and don't be negative. Can I hear an amen? I won't be hot church. We ain't in Africa. Talk to me. We're in San Diego. Critical spirit. Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? You're under attack. It's time to break that spiritual barrier. You're coming out of it. And then the worst thing is they lay down their gifts, you see, and that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal when you're in a spiritual barrier, when a leader comes under attack, is they, they go, I'm not going to serve no more. I'm not going to serve no more. I'm not going to usher no more. I'm not going to lead no more. I'm not going to bring soda to the group no more. <laughs> Nobody loves me. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to do it. No, they don't. No, then there's a negative. So what the devil wants to do, when you're under a spiritual attack, he wants to injure the gifted. He wants to injure the gifted. He wants to injure the preacher. Get the preacher to stop preaching. He wants to injure the discipler. Get the person who multiplies to stop discipling. He wants to injure the singer, the worshiper. He wants to injure the worshiper. You know, he wants to injure you. He wants to keep you stuck so you won't sing. You won't practice your gift. He wants to injure the, the giver. He wants to injure the generous person. He wants to injure the person in hospitality. He wants to ultimately injure the prayer warrior. If you can get the prayer warriors to stop praying and he can get the prayer warriors to stop bowing a knee before God and stop interceding for their pastor and stop interceding for their leader, what does he do? He causes the army to shrink. Come on, somebody. But how many say, no, I'm going to pick up my weapon. I'm going to use the gift that God has given me. I'm going to break through the spiritual barrier. Come on, Victor Outreach. Am I in the right church this morning? I'm not going to let the devil hold me down. So the first barrier that you're going to face as a leader is the spiritual barrier. The second barrier is called the relational barriers. Relational barriers. And we face these barriers. Listen, one of the attacks of the enemy is not only to attack you spiritually, but he wants to attack your relationships in the house of the Lord. Is, is this too real? Can you say amen? If you, you say yes, Pastor. You just say yes, Pastor. Some of you are doing it. Like, oh, that's good, Pastor. Bring it out. Yeah, I'm going to do my best to bring it out this morning because the devil wants to bring division in the house of the Lord. Oh, yeah, brother versus brother, sister versus sister, leader versus disciple, disciple versus leader. Oh, look at two or three people next. You say, we need each other. Come on, just pull on them. We need each other. We need each other. I need you to survive. What's that song? I need, there I go singing. I love singing when I'm in a good mood. I need you to survive. Tell your neighbor, I need you. See, the devil wants to attack relationship. The devil wants leaders to come out of fellowship. He wants leaders to come out of fellowship. Stop, stop connecting with other people in the church. Or, or clicking up. Oh, God, don't, let me, don't make me talk about clicks in the house of the Lord. That's my girl. That's my boy. No, no, that's your click. Us four, no more. Can't get in. Can I hear an amen? amen. He, wants to, he wants to attack relationships, bring division, pull leaders out of fellowship. And I want to share this with you this morning. I'm almost done preaching. Is we, we need those that will help us to grow. 
If we're going to break this barrier, we need people who are going to help us to grow. I've learned that whenever God wants to do something new in your life, he's always going to bring someone to help you get there. Let me tell you, my friend, your growth cannot be found in a book. You can go to all the Christian bookstores in San Diego, you're not going to find the growth you need. Can't be found in seminars. Can't be found in conferences. I'm not against seminars. I'm not against books. I've got hundreds of books. I've gone to hundreds of seminars. I'm in three, four, five conferences a year. I'm not against it. But the one thing I've learned in 25 years, that growth comes through relationship. I've got to position my life, watch, under someone that is in a place that I'm trying to get to. Oh, come on, somebody. If you're trying to be a good dad, stop hanging around bad dads. <laughs> I'm just going there. You want to be a good wife? You want to start cooking at home? Get under a woman that can cook, man. Like, show me some recipes. Show me how to hook it up. A way to a husband's heart is through his stomach. It's, it's very simple. Very simple, people. I'm just trying to show you a thing. Position your life under somebody that has what you need. Oh, my God. Notice I didn't say what you want. What you need. You need spiritual growth. You need development. You need insight. You need information. You need exampleship. Take your life. Position yourself under a leader. That's why I'm so proud of you for being here this morning. You guys have been so faithful. You've been coming to church. You've activated your church attendance because you're not just positioning yourself under the word. You're positioning under someone that has been to the places you're trying to get to. Come on, give God praise. But I want to tell you that there are other people in this church that can help you get to the next level. There are leaders in this church that can help you get to the next level. Whenever God sends, calls you to another level, he's going to send you somebody. He's going to put somebody in your life. Someone's going to reach out to you. Someone's going to say, you know what, man, would you go to coffee with me? Hey, is there any way that we could connect? Hey, are you going to the conference? Let's stay in the same hotel room. Hey, what are you up to this week? I'd like to connect with you. Listen, when they come to you, don't reject them. Recognize that God is sending them to you. Recognize that God is putting them in your life. Come on, Victor. How we told me preach this morning. God is sending them your way. Answer their text. Answer their Facebook post. Say, hey, I'm available. I want to grow. God must have sent you. You're an angel. Relationships. But why do some people struggle in this area? <laughs> because Relationships are the very reason why many of us have been hurt. Been hurt by leaders. Hurt by pastors. Hurt in the ministry. Hurt by other people. <laughs> right? See how you know, go there, pastor? Yes. But me too. Miller too. Chris too, Joe and Lydia too, Georgina too. Listen, you're not alone. We've all been hurt. We've all been hurt. You know why we've been hurt in relationship? Because people are imperfect. But God never changes. He's perfect in his love towards us. And you know what the devil wants? He wants to get you to give up on relationship. He wants to take your eyes off him and put your eyes on man. And let me tell you something about man. Man will fail you. Even the people that loved us the most have failed us. The very people that brought us into the world, tell the truth, tell the truth. Come on, Victor, tell the truth. Your parents weren't perfect. Your dad wasn't perfect. Yeah, your grandparents are perfect, but your parents weren't. They weren't perfect. They made mistakes. Why? Why did they make mistakes with you? Why did they make mistakes with me? Why did they mess up? Why? Because they're people and they were learning. Yeah. 
But do you still love your mom and dad? Do you still love them no matter what? Listen, those are the type of relationships that God wants to give us in the house of the Lord. We're all learning. We're all growing. But we're going there together. We're going to stick it out, not only in the good times. Come on, Victor Abbey. But we're going to stick it out while we're learning. If you're one of those people this morning that says, Pastor, this has been my barrier. Then you know what you need this morning? You need what Jesus offers. Jesus offers healing this morning. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to come in and begin to show you that he could give you the power to trust again. To break that relational barrier. If you've even been hurt by someone here and you're still here. Listen, the burden of change is not on them. The burden of change is on you. Because you can't continue to sit here hurt like a lost puppy. He said, well, I would make it if you, Pastor, work with me. Look, I do the best I can. I, but you understand, I'm, I have to meet the needs of hundreds and hundreds of people. Pastors that I talk to every single day from all over the world, praying for them, praying for their marriages, counseling them. God, that's just where God has me. And I want to meet your need. But you can't just depend on me to meet your need. You've got to link up with the leaders. You've got to get under somebody in this church. They're trained. They have a good heart. They want to work with you. They're genuine people. They won't quit on you. Come on, they'll quit on, they'll quit on you. It'll take longer for them to quit on you than me so busy they'll walk with you they'll spend time with you you got to give them a chance relational barriers let them heal your heart this morning let them heal your heart as I close did you guys get something today man this is so key as Matthew comes this is so key Spiritual barriers, I really wanted to give you this. Relational barriers, and then lastly, this is a big one, and, and I just feel this is what I, we're, 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 we're talking about. Financial barriers. Financial barriers. You know, there's a, there's a, a level of commitment that I believe God wants to move us to that's going to keep us breaking barriers. And one of those areas of commitment that we need to move to is an area of our money. Area of our money. Here's a question. What if we could measure your commitment based on your giving? What if we could measure your commitment based on your giving? What if, now, now I don't know everybody gives here, but I know, every, I know everyone here knows what they give. It's a personal thing. But if everyone walked around the church like that, those MasterCard commercials with the number of their giving flying over their head, ding, 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 ding. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Like, whoa, my God, wow. Oh, I, you'd be shocked. Because sometimes the people on, on the outside who look like they don't give are actually people that give the most. Because we always give according to our commitment. And if we're talking about warfare, and we're learning about warfare. You know what we need to learn how to do, guys? Let me tell you right now. We need, I don't have time to give you everything, but I want to tell you this. We need to learn how to warfare with our money. Your money is a weapon for war. Your money is a weapon for war. You say, well, where is that in the scripture, Pastor? Very simple. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. The Lord tells prophet Malachi to tell the people, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in my house, right? Test me in this, that I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Watch. And then what? And then what? And then what? Rebuke the devourer. That's warfare talk. That's the God of war saying that when you activate your giving, I will move into action against your financial enemies. catch it. But some of you are like, whoa, that's heavy. Yeah, God's a God of war. And how many of us leaders, we got to learn how to war in every area. War in our spirit, war in our relationships. We've got to war in prayer. And then we've got to war in our giving. The breakthrough for a leader is in their ability to do 
Warfare. Everyone say this with me. Say warfare. Warfare is key. Giving rebukes the devourer. Who is the devourer? Who is the devourer? You guys done with the message or is he not talking? Who is the devourer? Who is the devourer? I'm gonna keep doing it so some of you talk. Who is the devourer? Who is the devourer? Who is the devourer? Does the devil want your money? No, he doesn't. What does the devil need your money for? He's not building houses in hell. Think. 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 What in the world is the devil going to do with your money? comes to what? Think. He don't want your money. He don't want your money. He wants your soul. And he knows that as long as you give your money, I'm going to put the mic down. Y'all could just run. to the movies. Go ahead. Go ahead. So they can keep electing all these corrupt politicians. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it all you want. Give all your money to Starbucks so they can say how the church, they don't care about Christians and they don't care if Christians buy their coffee. Go, go ahead. bigger than your money warfare church warfare are you seeing it warfare it's time for leaders to do warfare in every area of their life in the spirit realm in the relationship realm and in the financial realm if you caught this word I'm gonna let you go come on clap for the Lord if you caught this word clap for the Lord Powerful, huh, Ralph? It's not a giving message. This is not a giving message. This is a warfare message. Warfare. And we have to approach our Christian faith with that mentality. Isn't that what the Muslims are doing? Well, I should say the Muslims, okay. Excuse me. Radical Islamic terrorism is done. These people are not playing. And y'all playing. Isn't that what the gangs are doing in Chicago? Even around here? These people are not playing. They're being used by the devil. It's demonic. 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 Demonic demonically designed to destroy lives demonically designed to destroy lives 
demonically designed to destroy. I came to expose the devil. Demonically designed to destroy lives. Come on, Christian people. Come on, Victory Outreach. Isn't this what we're involved in? Come on, warfare, 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 warfare. We can't let the devil win. We've got to fight for these kids. I Facebook the kids. I don't see them in church. Amen. Praying for you, brother. I love you. I didn't see you. Oh, man, Pastor, I love you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to make it. Okay, love you, man. Just know we love you. Praying for you. We got we to gotta connect. Are you hearing me today? And so what I really want you guys to do in this altar call here, if you're someone that you've been drifting from the Lord or you're not understanding the whole thing and today you're like, whoa, man, I'm in a battle. I'm in a war. You know, you should be at this altar when we, make, when we open it up. If you've been compromising and your money's been going to things that, you know, and just all these things. You look, let's look at your checkbook. Let's see where you've been. Let's look at your bank statement. Where have you been? The bar? Where have you been? Let's look at it. Let's see who's winning the battle. Because it'll tell us. Where your money goes will tell us who's winning. You see how real it is? It's all on paper. And you're here and say, Pastor, no, no, I, I, this message is for me. I got to break these barriers, man, because there's a big plan for my life. I can't let the devil win. And if this is for you today, just come on up. And, and, and the anointing is going to fill you up. And God's going to touch you. And if you've drifted from the Lord a little, this is your moment. Come on up. Play on the instruments, guys. Play